Okay, today's, today's Thursday, but Unit 5, Day 4, Properties of Logs. But uh, while I'm here, let me remind you that due tomorrow or due Friday, um, I'll put an assignment for you guys online to uh, upload your worksheets 1 through 4. So that's everything, not including what will be assigned today. So that's up to and including the graphs, um, but not including properties of logs. Everything is pretty well labeled, so it shouldn't be hard to figure out um, what's due, and it'll say it online as well. So have that ready to go um, for tomorrow. All right, properties of logs. Again, it's a pretty good day. I think the lesson is shorter. I think it's easy. And then the worksheet that goes with it is short. So another day where hopefully you'll finish before you leave and not have to worry about uh, homework. All right, log of one. By the way, some of these properties you can figure out. So these aren't necessarily like memorized properties. They're like, I can figure that out, properties. So the log of one, think about the fish hook thing. What's the base there? What's the missing base? 10. So 10 to the something, a fish hook around equals one. 10 to the what would be one. Into the zero would be one. So the log of one is zero. How about the natural log of one? We'll do the same thing. The base is e this time. So e to something equals one. Well, yeah, we're not super familiar with E, but anything to the zero is one, so that's got to be zero as well. So it doesn't really matter what the base is. The log base anything of one equals zero. log of A times B. Again, I think this is something that is usually taught in Algebra 2, but given last year's circumstances, who knows? If you're taking the log of a product, it turns out you can add the individual logs. Kind of a weird property. It's a really useful property in calculus. Um, for us, it's just kind of about learning the basics of the property. Here's what it's related to, if this helps. When you do x squared times x cubed, what's x squared times x cubed? How did you get x to the fifth? You added them. So you guys are used to this, most of you anyway. When you're multiplying with exponents, you can add the exponents. Well, logs and exponents have a lot of things in common. So when you're multiplying with logs, it turns out you can add the logs. It's very similar to what to what that is. Okay, use your big math brain and think about this. If a, if multiplication leads to addition, what do you suspect division would lead to? There it is. I heard it. Subtraction. Log of A minus log of B. And it's kind of the same thing. If you had x to the fifth over x, you would subtract the exponents. Well, logs and exponents have a lot of things in common. So if you're dividing, then you can split up the logs and include a subtraction sign in there. Subtract them. Log of A to the K. 
Anybody remember this rule? What you can do with the K? Yeah, maybe you didn't have it. I don't know. This is this is probably the most helpful rule for us when it comes to solving equations. The K can come down front as a coefficient rather than an exponent, which is, again, it's going to be super helpful later. This is also related to rules of exponents because when you have a power to a power, when you have an exponent to an exponent, you multiply them. Well, that's kind of what we've got here. We've got a power to a power, so we can multiply that k out front. Um, well, they're all helpful, but this number four <coughs> is going to be really useful when it comes to solving equations. All right, that's really it for new concept stuff. And we're going to use it a couple different ways. But those are the properties you got to know. There's a couple things we'll do with them. When we, when we travel from this side to this side, when we travel from like one log statement to a longer log statement or multiple log statements, that's, we call that expanding. And depending on the problem, sometimes it's useful to expand. Going the other way, if we start with something long and drawn out and we get it down to one log statement, any guesses on what word goes there? Condense. Condense. We'll shrink them down into one log statement. And we want to be able to do either one. So we'll have questions that say expand this. We'll have another question that says condense this. So Roman numeral one, let's expand natural log x cubed y squared over the square root of z. Now, rather than do one little piece at a time, I just threw it all in at once and said, well, we'll just kind of figure it out. Because like so everything that could not go wrong, but everything we could test for expanding is in that problem. So I guess probably the first thing I recognize is we're dividing. So I'm going to rewrite this as natural log of x cubed y squared minus natural log of the square root of z. But here we're multiplying. So we could expand those two into two pieces as well. Natural log of x cubed plus, right, because that was multiplying, so now we're going to add natural log y squared. And we still have minus natural log square root of z out there at the end. There's exponents that we can now move down front. What about this square root of z? What's the exponent for a square root? One half. One half. And we've got to remember that because we use that a lot. So we're going to move that one half down front as well. So 3 natural log x plus 2 natural log y minus 1 half natural log z. Expanded it out. I want you to try one. Log base 3 of 17. Yeah, that's the answer. Just expand it as much as you can, and that is the answer. Log base 3 of 17 cube root of y over a squared. Again, there's all sorts of problems with that one. So take a minute and see if you can expand that one, and then we'll look and see how you did. Okay, step one, the, I see the division signs. I'm going to split them up. Then I see that these are multiplied, 
17 times cube root of y. So log base 3 of 17 plus log base 3. And this time I'm going to get ahead of the game a little bit. I'm going to change that to y to the 1 third because I know what's coming. And then the ones that have an exponent, the exponents can move down front. Can't really do anything with the 17. So we've expanded that as much as we can. Again, once you've done a few of these, you get the hang of it and you you'll start to be able, some of you will jump straight to the final answer because anything that's in the top is positive. Anything that's in the bottom is negative. And then just put those exponents out front of each piece. Let's do a condensed problem. Let's condense into one log. So it's sort of, it's the opposite problem. Not sort of, it is the opposite problem. We're going to give you one that's all expanded. I want you to crunch it all down into one piece. So let's do log base 2 of 2x minus 2 log base 2 of x minus log base 3 of 4y. Again, get the hang of these, you can start shortcutting stuff. Uh, maybe we don't need to do that just yet. I'll move that exponent, or move the coefficient back as an exponent. And then I'll use that idea that anything positive is in the top, anything negative is being divided. So these these two things are negative, so both of those will go in the bottom. So 2x in the top, and then x squared and 4y in the bottom. Oh, I sure did. That wouldn't... Yeah, I couldn't do this if this is not all the same base. Thank you for catching that. So... The bases have to be the same or else there's no combining. If they're not the same, then you can't combine or more likely I made a mistake like I just did there. So good catch. They've got to be the same base for you to do the, the combining. And then not quite done because we can simplify the, the um, what we're taking the log of here. Let's see, x over x squared would be an x in the bottom. 2 over 4 would be 2 in the bottom. There's a y in the bottom. And again, you've seen me make this joke before, but it was so funny when the student did that. All right. Everything from the top canceled, Mr. Wolf. Well, yes. But you got to have a 1 up there. So we condensed it into, into one log. I want you to try to condense one. 3 natural log y minus 2 natural log x plus 1 plus natural log of z. Again, anything positive is multiplied. Anything negative is divided. Exponents go up top. So some of you will jump almost to this final answer. So give that a try, and then we'll look at it. So probably the first thing I'd do is put those exponents or the coefficients back as exponents. Then again, anything that's being added is being multiplied. It's a weird thing to say, but so these two things are positive. They'll end up in the top. So y cubed and z in the top. This one's being subtracted, so he's going to end up in the bottom because subtraction and division kind of go together. And then that's my final answer. So there's really not much to it once you start to get the hang of it. 
fix the exponent coefficient thing, and then anything positive goes to the top, anything negative is division, so it goes to the bottom. All right, last Roman numeral. We're going to use the properties to find some logs that we don't know. So given that the log of 2 is 0 0.301 and that the log of 3 is 0 0.477 and let's just say that this is base A because we don't know what base that is and that will prevent you from using a calculator basically or at least it'll force you into using a calculator the way we want you to use a calculator. If you want to figure out what the log base A of 6 is, we want you to figure out how to use what you know to come up with something that you don't know. So how could we rewrite 6? using the things that we know. Kind of a think outside the box problem. What's another way to write 6? What's the same? What equals 6? 2 times 3. But now we can use properties of logs to split that up. Log base A of 2 plus log base A of 3. But we know both of those things. 0 0.301 plus 0.477 is point. You can't add them sideways like that. You got to stack them to add them, right? This 0.778. And you'll have a calculator on this, so this. It, but it will force you into knowing properties because we don't tell you what base we're using. So you can't just type log of 6 in the calculator and get an answer because this is maybe not base 10. Log base A of 8. So I need to rewrite 8 in terms of things that we know. So how could I rewrite 8? What's that? 2 times 4. Yeah, except I don't know anything about 4. I need to write it all in terms of 2 and 3. Right? Because I know what log of 2 is and log of 3 is. So I need to write it all in terms of... I need to figure out how to get to 8 using 2s and 3s. 3 2s. Or 6 and 2 because you already know 6. Yeah, you could use a previous problem. But I'm going to use... Wait, no, not 6 and 2. If you did 6 and 2, they would add to 8, but we don't have a property for adding logs. We only have a property for multiplying. So we got to figure out how to multiply to get there, but 2 times 2 times 2 would work. Which, by the way, is the same thing as 2 cubed. But if there's a 3 up top, we can move the 3 down front. And we know what log base A of 2 is. So 3 times 0 0.301. So that would be 0 0.903. Or we, if you don't, if you didn't see the cube, you could have done it as log of two plus log of two plus log of two, and you would have added 0 0.301 three times, but that's the same thing as multiplying it by three. That's sort of how it, how this thing works. You try that one. Figure out how to rewrite log base a of 12. 
So to get to 12, you could do 2 times 2 times 3. And you could do that as 2 squared if you want. Or you could just say, you know what, let's just do log of 2 plus log of 2 plus log of 3. You could, since we already had 6. That's a good question. Could I just change this to 2 times 6 because we know log of 6? Yeah, you could, since we already have that answered. So 0 0.301 plus 0 0.301 plus 0 0.477. By the way, you will have a calculator on the test. So if you're worried about adding decimals, just type them all in. Uh, let's see, that's 0.602 plus 0 0.477. Alright, 1.079. Alright, word of caution on this last section. This was an oversight on my part. And that is, I don't think I can find any of these in on the worksheet, but they are definitely on the test. So I'll try to sneak some in in warm-ups in the coming days so that you'll see them and get some more practice with them because um, that's that's just bad teaching to give notes on it and then not practice it and then throw it on the test. So just fair warning, it's definitely on the test. It's not on today's worksheet. So today's assignment is Unit 5, Worksheet 5. It's all about... Um, expand and condense. And so once you get the hang of expand and condense, today's worksheet will go pretty quick. Again, due tomorrow is worksheets one through four. So have those ready to go. If you're in class, if you're watching at home, um, I'll have a submission spot um, ready to accept those worksheets.